This is how to break down and perform basic care and maintenance of the one-cylinder, two-stroke cycle gasoline powered chainsaw. You'll need all the equipment shown here, including gloves, eye and ear protection, a rag, a scrunch and start tool, red grease for other crude lubrication, and 50 to 1 fuel. To begin, remove the bar cover plate by removing the case nuts. A good trick once you've removed the nuts is to start placing your equipment inside the cover plate to keep track of it. Next, remove the bar and chain. Underneath the bar, you'll notice the chain tensioner cover plate. Remove the screw that secures the tensioner plate. Then, use the plate to scrape out any debris inside the bar channel on both sides of the bar. Next, inspect the bar to look for discoloration or bluing on the edge, indentations from the chain, and folding over the metal material. If there is significant folding over the metal, replace the bar through personnel at Fire Station 23. This bar here has a burred edge, so we'll use a flat file to file this down until it's smooth. Make sure the bar is straight and true, and clean of any debris using a rag with mild soap and water or a degreaser. Inspect the chain next. We're looking for damage to any of the cutters or teeth, the tie straps, and drive links. Here's a picture of the parts of the chain. If any teeth are missing, remove from service, tag the chain, and send it to Fire Station 23 for repair. Inspect the tensioner and make sure it isn't damaged or broken and that it tensions properly. Check the chain catch and make sure that it isn't damaged or broken either. If it is broken, place the saw out of service. Now let's inspect the clutch cover and e-clip assembly. When you're trying to remove the e-clip, place your finger over the rounded side of the e-clip as you see here. Use the scrunch to remove it. Make sure the e-clip is installed with the round side facing down to help with removal later. Remove the washer and place inside the cover plate with the rest of your parts. Pull off the 387 tooth sprocket and look for wear in all four corners. This one here is approaching the need for replacement. According to the manufacturer, a good rule of thumb is to replace the sprocket once for every two chains used and replace the bar once for every two sprockets or four chains. Remove the clutch cover plate. Use your thumbnail to remove any grease or debris that's found inside and then wipe it down. Remember that the saws are air cooled and any excess buildup anywhere in the saw has the potential to overheat it. This is why we need to be diligent in our care and maintenance of these saws. Sitting underneath the clutch cover plate is the needle bearing. The needle bearing is a small plastic bearing that sits inside. If it overheats, it could disintegrate, causing the stem here to vibrate. This stem attaches to the piston, so if it vibrates too much, it can cause the motor to catastrophically fail. The needle bearing needs to remain lubricated. To do so, just take some of the red grease found at the station and coat the bearing on all sides. Take some of the grease and lubricate the stem as well. Place the needle bearing back on the stem and replace the clutch cover plate. To replace the clutch cover plate, Line the cutout up with this tiny pin behind the clutch you see here. Lining it up is the only way to reseat the cover plate in the correct position. Release the chain brake, if it's engaged, and rotate the clutch cover plate until you hear a clicking sound. Make sure the clutch cover plate is even with the needle bearing before replacing the 387 tooth sprocket. When replacing it, make sure the writing is facing up. Replace the washer, making sure it's not ovaled out. Next, replace the e-clip and make sure that the round side is facing down. Place your finger back over the top of it and push with the screwdriver. This prevents the e-clip from shooting out away from you. Clean out any remaining debris that is visible at this stage. Now it's time to replace the tensioner cover plate and bar and chain. Make sure the bar is sitting flush on the bar studs. This saw has bar studs with a conical edge. The older style saws have bar studs that are straight and flat across and have a tendency to get crushed. Don't tighten down the nuts yet because next we'll tighten the chain.
One method for tensioning the chain is holding the bar upwards. We hold it up like this because without it, we would lose tension when we ran the saw. So hold the bar upwards and then begin to tension the chain. Make sure the chain brake is off while you're doing it. Once the chain is tightened down, then tighten the case nuts down securely. Tighten the rear nut first, followed by the front one. A rule of thumb when tensioning the chain is it should be tight enough to only be able to slip the width of a quarter between the chain and the bar. Once the saw is reassembled, run it to make sure there are no issues prior to placing it back in service.